There is a sixth dimension, beyond that which is known to scammers. It is a dimension composed of digital artifacts, zeros and ones, where no one knows who anyone truly is. It is the middle ground between trust and lies, between naivete and greed, and it lies between the cesspool of fraud and deception and the misguided belief that anyone would offer wealth that you are entitled to in exchange for a nominal shipping and handling fee. This is the dimension of retaliation. It is an area which we call messing with scammers. Greetings, I'm Scott Robison, your host for part five of the Reverend Henry Chronicles. Tonight's installment is brought to you by the American Obstetrics Association. Even the easiest of pregnancies and childbirths are a huge strain to both mother and baby. Obstetricians undergo years of training and practice to minimize the risk to both patients, and additionally, they have the medical and surgical skills to intervene in emergencies and complicated pregnancies. If you or someone you love may be pregnant, please consult with a qualified and licensed obstetrician as early as possible. The American Obstetrics Association. People pulling people out of people. Originally, tonight's update was going to be rather bland. I had not really heard from Reverend Henry since last Thursday. No phone call attempt since last Friday. But I sent him a few emails tonight and I got the ball rolling again. The last thing I shared, as you can see above, was an email that I sent Sunday afternoon explaining that my reunion, uh, you know, about my reunion with my old Captain Barney Miller, all my old co-workers who've passed away. I gave him an update on the crowdfunding campaign, and I offered to make a donation to his church once I had my money because I want to help good people and causes. I heard nothing at all yesterday, but finally this morning I got an email. Dear Stan, sorry replied late. I have been very busy lately. Well, we still waiting on your payment so that we can proceed with your delivery. You sound very sharp on the phone. You're so full of life. I watched the fundraising campaign, and it's moving well. The Reverend Father don't get married. Stan, well, I would be looking forward on your update. Remain blessed. Thanks for your cooperation. Regards, Reverend Henry. So, one, we know that the man has great taste. I mean, after all, he thinks I sound very sharp and that I'm very full of life, which really just goes to prove that a broken clock is correct twice a day. And in other great news, he says he's watched the fundraising campaign. Now, I've checked the log files for the Funds a Poppin' website, and I don't see any suspicious IP addresses in my logs. But he could just mean that he is you know, seen the screen captures that I sent him. He might consider that keeping track of it. Regardless, it's good stuff. Most notably in this email, I saw a new piece of information that I don't remember seeing previously, and that is a branch office address in Washington, D.C. After thinking about it for a few hours, I put together the following email. It's so good to hear from you, and I have great news. A friend of mine, seeing how well things were progressing with my fundraising campaign, has agreed to loan me the money in advance of the end of the campaign. I just printed out an envelope, which I scanned and am attaching to this email as evidence. I wrote a short letter and included a cer certified cashier's check for $550. The letter reads, begin letter, Dear Reverend Henry, in close, please find a check in the amount of $550 to be used for DHL shipping of my Barclays ATM card. The shipping address is, gave him my fake name and my fake address, thank you so much for your time and patience these past two weeks as I attempted to raise the needed money to cover shipping costs. As indicated in a previous email, please let me know if there are any projects underway at your church that might benefit from a cash donation and how much. I believe in donating to good people and good causes. I'll forward the money as soon as possible after receipt of the ATM card. Sincerely and with many blessings, Stanley Wojciechowicz. Then I had to send two more messages really quickly. I'm so foolish. I forgot to include the scanned copy of the envelope. Please see attached. Also, just in case there are questions, I can be reached at my fake phone number. By the way, I noticed in the past you've called from the number 
a fake Connecticut phone number, but in the most recent email, you included a fake DC phone number. Which number should I use in the future? Should I need to contact you? Thanks for your time. Here's my fake envelope with my fake address and the Washington branch of Barclays Bank. Um, One more email was sent. Stupid me, one more thing. Good news. The crowdfunding campaign is up to $218 from 25 people. Woohoo! Now, I, I was hoping that this might generate a response from him. I was expecting to hear something from him maybe tomorrow. And I was completely shocked at just how quickly he responded. Within three minutes, I received this. Listen, you are to cash the check and send it to the payment details I instructed. With that, should be done fast, Stan. Little awkward, but I get it. I made a mistake. Okay. He also turned around and sent a copy of an email that he had sent previously, most notably with the receiver's name, address, amount to send, and the money transfer control number. Nothing. I mean, we've seen this before. Don't really need to go through that a bunch again. Within eight minutes of me sending him that third email, he started calling. In fact, here is a screen capture from my phone showing the log of calls. Uh, Canceled, connected, missed, uh, connected, connected, connected. Since I was right in front of the computer, I really wanted to record it. The connection is so bad that we were disconnected uh, twice and failed to connect two other times. Two out of the six calls were successful. Here you go. Hello? Yeah, hello. Hi, can I help you? Can I speak to Ali? Yeah, this is Reverend Harry Lawson. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. It's Stanley. How are you today, my brother? I'm doing really, really well. Thank you so much for asking. It's been a very exciting day. I don't know if you've got the emails that I sent you yet. I had a friend loan me $550 until this fundraising campaign concludes. And so um, I got a cashier's check today. I put that into an envelope, and I just put that in a mailbox down at the end of my street. No. I wanted to cash it. Cash it and send it through. Uh, cash it and send it through a Western Union or Monitor. All right? Ooh. I would want to cash it and send it yeah, through the information I sent it to you previously. You have to send it to Nahim Caulfield in New York. All right? That is the instruction I said to you the last time you spoke about the payment details. Oh, I'm that, sorry. That is how it's going. So, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, all right? I, I, I kind of remember that now that you mention it, but it's been so long. I just I got your email today with the with the Washington D.C. address, and I thought let's send that off right now. Um, here's my problem: the check is in a United States post office mail drop. It's against the law for me to reach in and pull it out. I don't even know if I'd be able to with the way that they create these boxes. So. Um, you, you. You try to do that, please. It is very, very important, okay? Because um, as I speak to you, those are the instructions. You have to cash the check and you send the money via MoneyGram or we send it on to my own coffee. That will be fast and that will be easier. And that is our account officer, all right? I can't, I have no, I have, I have, I have no right to receive any payment. On anybody you have. Well, when when right. you when you get it, could you just forward it to him in my behalf? I don't. We don't do that. That are not our procedure. Please, please. I oh. would not. I would love you to call them to ask them to return it, or you send a different payment because or, uh, if it gets there, I have no right to forward it to him. Oh, please. All right. Okay. Call them to return the check back. Yeah, you just call them and ask them to return the check back. All right? Oh. You cash it yourself. You go to MoneyGram and you send it to the payment details I just the payment details I instructed you with. All right. Well, All right. I'll 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 see what I can do to get the letter back, but I may not 
I, you know, like I said, it's already in a government mailbox. I mean, it's it's against the law. I could go to prison if I try to reach into a mailbox. And as you and I both know, doing things illegally the wrong way is not the right way to do this. So here's what I'll do. I will, I'll go see if there's any way I can get it back without breaking the law. I'll talk to my right. post office in the morning and see if I can get that from them. Um, otherwise, I'll have to go to my bank and see if they can put a stop payment on this certified check. I don't know yeah. how possible yeah, that, that is because I've never done anything like that before. They can do that. They can do that. You just okay. tell them you sent the money to the wrong, the wrong individual. Okay. And, uh, you want to put. A, All right. You want to put a stop well, on the, You're the one who works for a bank, so I'm sure you know better than I. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to uh, put you. Uh, that's what I'm trying to put you through. You call the bank. You tell them to put a stop. You send a, a check to a wrong individual that you want to put a stop to. So you cash the money. You move down to the nearest restaurant. And you can also go to the bank and cash the money because I'm not going to make use of the check. All well, right? I know, but... So I, you don't to the yeah, I just... Money. I mean, I know you if I walked the in with the check, I could tell them, oh, by the way, I don't need this check after all. Can we reverse it? But I don't have the check. The check's yeah. in an envelope yeah. right now. So anyway, I'll, I'll do what I can. I'll, I'll try to figure this out. I'm really sorry for this inconvenience. I was just so excited that I had $550 to send to you, you know, what is it? Today's the seventh, like a week early that... I just yeah. Anyway, yeah. I got yeah. a little too excited. I'm sorry I, I didn't read the instructions more carefully. Yeah. You should have. You should have contacted me first because I uh, previously you asked for the details and which I sent uh, you was it from days ago. I said right. you only received no, no, yeah. accounts of it. Now, now that Nine. you now that you're yeah. reminding me of it, I I do I do kind of remember that now. I just, I'm, you know, yeah. for, you know, I'm 73 years old, so I've been paying bills for 50, I, 60 years now. I, I've, I'm, I'm just used to writing things out on a check, sticking them into an envelope and sending them to the person who needs them. So I've, I've never used MoneyGram or Western Union or anything like that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. I understand. But that is the easier way. All right. You just, what you do is that, uh, uh, you go to your bank, you revise the check, you put the stop on the check, same time you withdraw the money, right? You go to the nearest money, you close to you and uh, uh, remit the payment. It's as simple as that. Because I personally, I wouldn't touch, I wouldn't touch the check. So okay. It's not of my department. It's not of, yeah, it's not, it is not on, it is not on me. It's not my doing that I would touch or forward any amount uh, uh, to the account. To the account department on anybody's behalf. That is not our procedures. Okay. Right? Okay. I. I. All I right. mean, like I said, I. I'll, I'll. I'll do what I can. I until I have a check in hand. I don't know. You know. I mean. I. I guess. I. You know what? Here's probably what you need to do when you receive it, because you can't forward it on for me. I mean. Maybe well, maybe I can see. get it back from the from the post office tomorrow. But if I can't get it back from the post office, could you just stamp you know return to sender on it, and then it'll come back to me, and then I can take the check out, go back to the bank, and reverse that money, and then send it to you through MoneyGram. I would I would see what I can because as it is right now, as it is right now, I I work a lot and. <laughs> There's, there's no possible, there's no assurance that I will be at the branch office over there. There's no assurance that I'll be in uh, Washington by the time the check gets there. I work all around the state because we have different branches all around. Oh, okay. I don't stay in Washington. That is one of the problems. And the second problem is that I have no right to send any payment on anybody in this head. That is not our procedures. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm understanding it. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm not, I'm sure that this stuff is second nature to you because you do it all the time. Um, and you know, yeah. I, I've, I've never done anything like this. The, the most I ever did, you know, I was, I, I, I 
just was a detective. That's all that I knew how to do. I never learned how to do things financial or technology or whatever. They, those, those things are just hard for me to understand. I understand. So you just try your best. Or don't you have the that's not the mailbox? Uh, or don't you have the uh, phone number? You call them right away and tell them to put the stuff on it. Why right? is that simple as that? I'm sorry, you I didn't catch that last bit. Call who? Yeah, you call them and ask them. Yeah, call them and ask them to put a stop on the uh, delivery. All right. Call the post office and have them stop delivery. Oops, we seem to have been disconnected. Perhaps he will call back here in a moment. I shall wait. Hello? Yeah, hello. Stanley? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you better. Okay. Yeah, as I was saying, yeah, I, I, as I was saying previously, you just have to try your best to put a stop and a hold on it. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I will do what I yeah, can. Yeah, I was, because actually I don't really know. I don't really know because as it is right now, I travel a lot. Okay. I travel a lot. Right? Oh. I travel from different branches to different branches. That is the problem. I travel a lot. I might not be in the office when the uh, when the check get back, when the check arrives. Okay. So I would advise you to just call them. I would advise you to call them to put a stop on the delivery. Okay, right. so uh, I, I'm and not sure I understand. Yeah. Who who should I call to put a stop on the the, the, the post office or my bank? The, you call the post office and you call the bank. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I will try both office. of them. M maybe I could call the yeah. branch. Ooh, excuse me. I just dropped my phone. I'm All so right. sorry. Sorry. All right. So maybe you call what? I was I was thinking maybe I could call the branch that I'm sending it to and just if they get it yeah I'm just trying to cover all the bases so I can call the post office and try to get them to not deliver it I'll call my bank and see if I can put a stop uh, payment on the check and then I could call the branch that you're at right now and just would, ask them I to would. turn it you know it's like if you get it please send it back to me I would you don't have to stress yourself on that as far as it gets there, I would instruct them. I would instruct them to send it back. Okay, awesome. Right. Okay, so you'll uh, handle you'll yeah. handle the branch, I and would, I'll handle the other two. Yeah, yeah, I will handle the branch. So you handle the other two. All right. Okay. As far as it gets there, I would instruct them to return it back. But you try. You just, it hasn't been long. You posted it, right? I'm sorry. What? It hasn't been long. You posted it. It hasn't been long. You no, I just, I, you know, I've, so the, the way that it is in my neighborhood is we have like a community mailbox where there's like one central location and there's a separate mailbox for each house in the neighborhood. In that yeah. collection of mailboxes, there's also an outbound mail slot. So all that I did is I put it into the outbound mail slot. So it won't be picked up until tomorrow when they deliver the mail um and i don't i mean it's it's 11:42 here i doubt i can reach anybody at the post office tonight i know i can't reach anybody at my bank tonight but i will i will try to to deal with this stuff first thing in the morning oh please you do that first thing in the morning please okay right. i will i will give it my best mean? shot no. i'll i'll go back to the mailbox tonight and oh. see you know, maybe I didn't push it all the way in, so maybe that's there's a way I can reach in and pull it back out. I just I, I'll I'll well, I'll do what I can. Try your best. You try your best. Okay. You I try will, your best. You I will try, try best. my best. All right. Take care of yourself and remember less. All right. Okay. Thank you. Remember. As soon as you as soon as back, you, as soon as you get back, you just send me an email and let me know what the update is. Okay. All right. All right. I'll I will do that. All right. All right. Take care of yourself. I remember this. Thank God you. Bless you. Take care. Bless you too. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. yeah. 
And that's where we are tonight. I told him I would try to get the letter back. When I next communicate with him, it'll be to let him know that I was arrested for tampering with the mailbox. But they let me go. And I have to wait some modest amount of time, a day or two, whatever it is, for the bank to refund the money from the certified cashier's check to my account. The crowdfunding continues to pick up the pace ever so slightly. We're all the way up to $226 out of 550 with six days remaining, or four really, because we'll reach 550 in four days, and then we'll reach 157 million two days after that. And then I won't need the money, but I'll try to share the wealth with him, and we'll see how that works. Thank you for watching. As always, I welcome feedback. Please leave comments or messages. If you don't want to do that, you like it, click the like. I'd appreciate that. If you don't like it, you can click the dislike. But if you don't like it, I'd really like to hear from you to know what might make things better. Uh, if you did like it, please share it with your friends who you think are like-minded and might enjoy it as well. And if you'd like to be notified when each part is released, please click subscribe. Until next time, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars.